Holy Spirit, speak to us the mind of the Father. So that as we listen, we will hear you clearly and turn our hearts to wisdom. In Jesus' name, we pray. Please take your seat. I welcome us to the presence of God as in the next few minutes we'll be hearing God talk to us very briefly. And that will be the power of God that will go out with us this week. You will never be alone. The power of God will be with you. We like to talk about an aspect of prayer. We cannot handle everything about prayer within a few minutes. So just an aspect of it, just a, a, a little a little aspect of prayer. And God will help us and grant us understanding. In Luke chapter 11, in Luke chapter 11, verse 9, Scripture says, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will do what? You will find. Knock, and the door will do what? Will be opened to you. That is Luke 11 verse 9. In this scripture, it is Jesus himself saying what you have just listened to. Jesus teaching people, and he told them, say, my people, if you ask, it will be given you. If you seek, you will do what? You will find. If you knock at the door, the door will do what? Somebody behind the door will open the door to you. Say amen. amen. That's what Jesus taught. And I know that Jesus does not tell a lie. If he says there is open door when you knock, there is open door. Is it not true? If Jesus says, knock the door, the door will be opened. Believe it and do it. And you have an open door this week. Yeah. This is also carrying a condition. If you know my God very well, there is nothing he gives without asking you to participate. Did you hear me? Whatever you will get from the law, the same God will ask you to do a thing first before you get it. Is God wicked? Okay. For you to get a better understanding, if you do not knock the door, will the door be open? Do you have a role to play now? Do you have a role to play? What's your role? Uh -huh. you see, God doesn't just take things and throw them at people. He didn't make you a robot. When you press one button, the person will just remove the go. Mm -mm. God didn't make you like that. God wants to get you involved. Listen to me. In our Anglican church, for those of you who are visitors, when we worship God, when we come together to worship, we don't leave the worship in the hand of the, the person who is leading. When he says something, by our order, he expects you to respond. I believe we're not to do so for you. When I say, the Lord be with you, say you will respond. That is how we organize our own church. It's not pastor, pastor, pastor. Pastor has a role to play. Members will also have a role to play. That's good worship. Now, so God be. Where we read now, he said, if you ask, you will. What if you don't ask? <laughs> That's the thing. You have a role. 
Is there anybody that seeks with fine? Whoever does not seek, we not. Answer it well, we not. You will not find. So there is condition for everything. And that is the aspect I introduced this message with this morning. That's the aspect. Your role, your role, your duty, if you want God to answer your prayer. All of us know how to pray. Even if you don't know how to pray, you know how to, how to complain to God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Abi, even if you don't, that's a big prayer, but you know how to complain. When some things are not going well, you will complain. God, wait till now. God, now let me say, God, help me now. God, do it for me now. You're already doing what? You're praying. You're already praying. Hallelujah. I want to give us one example, and the example perhaps will drive the message home, that you have a role to play before God will answer your prayer. How many of us don't pray today? Can you remember what you prayed about? No, you don't remember. God, I thank you. I sleep. I wake up. I did go to church this morning. Some people don't even pray. Say that they go to church. For those who prayed, and you remember what you prayed for, if you want God to answer that prayer, God is looking for a thing. And that's the thing I want to point out. Can we go to 1 Kings chapter 3? And that's the example. 1 Kings chapter 3. Is story of a man called Solomon. First King chapter three. Are you there? Look at it from verse uh, five. The Bible says, at Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon. When? What was happening that night? Sleeping and doing what? Now, please stop there first. In the night, Solomon was asleep and he was dreaming. He was dreaming. So it was not Solomon sitting down face to face with God. Solomon's eyes were closed. Solomon was sleeping. And not only sleeping, he was dreaming. And in this dream, the Lord appeared to him and told him, Solomon, ask for whatever you want. Praise God. Please give it back to me. Ask and you will. Is that not where we are coming from? You see the same thing in First King chapter 3. This man was asleep. He was dreaming and he saw somebody like God appearing to him in dream and asking him, Solomon, ask whatever. Ask whatever you want. As you read that passage down, listen, as you read that passage down, we are told that Solomon placed a request after hearing that question, asking, I mean, hearing that command, ask whatever you want. And Solomon said, well, my father, God, thank you for what you did through my father, David. And you have uh, seen me even though I'm a small boy, I don't know my right from my left. You deemed it fit to make me king instead of my father, in place of my father. What will I ask for? Give me. Because the people you are asking me to watch over, to lead, they are your people. Who can lead these wonderful people of yours? God's own people that must be led with carefulness. Praise God. And as I talk to you now, I am very careful about what I'm saying because of what Solomon said. He said the people are the people of God. So me, as a pastor, I don't need to play with you. I don't need to play with your intelligence. 
Because you are people of God. If I use my intellect, my intelligence, my whatever I can, my position to rule and to lead you, people of God, God will be angry. Did you hear me? This message, I'm what I'm saying now, I'm saying it to myself and to every minister of God who cares to hear. Solomon said, the people are your people, oh. And God told me, the church belongs to him. Have you anybody get the church? Especially our Anglican church. Nobody get a mo. Nobody get a mo. The primate cannot come here and say, it's my church. Even our bishop here cannot say, this is my church. Do you understand what I'm saying? Who owns the church? The Lord Jesus. Because anybody will come up and say, this church is my church. Ask her whether he died for the church. Whether he shed blood for the church. If he say yes, then he should not be there. Not be saying don't die. He should live. Hallelujah. Only one man shed blood because of the church. And that is the rightful owner of the church. So ministers of God should learn to lead the people of God the way God wants them led. That's the message. But for you, congregation, for me, who will go to God and ask some things from God? Solomon was dreaming. And he said, the people are yours. I want ability to discern. I want to discern. I want to discern. To discern is ability to judge between what is what? Right or wrong. Ability to judge what is right and what is wrong. And that is also equal to wisdom. Will not they hear me at all? Anybody you see, say this person wise, oh, it is the ability in that person to discern, discernment. That's what Solomon asked for. And uh, the Spirit of God is the only one that gives right, in fact, is the owner of discernment. Any wisdom you see being displayed that does not come from the Holy Spirit is the wisdom of the world. If you read James, you will find it. He said there's a wisdom that belongs to the world. There is also one wisdom that comes from above. The one that comes from above is, is, is propelled, is, is led, is inspired by discernment. Listen to me and look up. If you are a Christian and you have the spirit of discernment, you have the gift of discernment, when you see somebody leading you in the wrong path, you will do what? You will know. When you look at the person, you may not ask plenty questions. Something inside of you will immediately tell you that the person is not right. You can judge a friend. You can judge who is a good friend and who is a bad friend when you have discernment. You can judge which is a good business to do, which is not a good business to do. You can judge which is this. Which seven men or three men are looking for my, my hand in marriage. If the spirit of discernment is in your head, you will know who is deceiving you, and you also know the person that is serious, looking for your daughter's hand in marriage. You will know who is asking you to please marry me. Can you marry me? Could you please marry me? That spirit will help you. And this spirit does not just come. Is somebody listening to me? This is the aspect of the prayer I promise to give you this, in this message. This discernment, this gift does not just come. You don't just sit down in church and the Holy Ghost will give you power to discern. You have a role to play. And what is this role? It's just more than asking. Now, let's look at this case study of Solomon again. Solomon was sleeping. And in dream, he could ask right. If now you they dream, God asks you what you want. 
Wait till you go tell her. Now you are the ass, well. Now dream with the talk, so it's not reality. Oh. The man was asleep, oh. he was dreaming. If, if there's a woman here, if there's a woman here who does not carry a child, who does not have a child, will it be a thing that is wrong for that woman to say, oh God, if only you can give me a child. You understand what I'm saying now? It's, it's, it's an aspect of, of, of a man who wants prayer answer. Solomon spelt it out. Before I give, take you deeper a little, for instance, only last week here, I was somewhere, listen to this, I was somewhere last week. One minister of God I shared with the wife within the week. He was in a village, he was posted to a village, a village, -o. and when he got there, he faced his work, and as a minister to the people of God, he was also engaged in visiting members. So one day, first, he visited one old woman as a member of the church. And the old woman welcomed him. The woman was happy. The following week again, the pastor went there. Just like that, it's like he developed that habit of going from house to house, visiting members. And this old woman, this particular woman, Picked serious interest in this kind of visitation. Pastor, we get there. Mama, how are you? How are you doing today? Mama say, I don't sleep well, oh. Now this way, so the way is not, not they give me chance, so pastor will lay hand on her head and pray and go. The following week, the pastor will come back. And that was how God was helping this old woman. And he said, ah, since when will they welcome pastor for this village? I've not seen a pastor like this who visit members. And the woman sent this same message to a son of hers. In Peking, will be commissioner. He day outside. He not day inside the village. My Peking, there is one pastor they sent to this village. This pastor leg not they come up from my house, so always praying for me. Always taking care of each. He doesn't give me money. He has nothing to give me, but I they enjoy the man prayer. And he asked after me. He's a good pastor. That was how Mama was reporting pastor to the son, who is a commissioner. And commissioner was listening. Day in and out, Mama will tell commissioner, this pastor is good. This pastor is good. This pastor is wonderful. One day, the commissioner now came back, came to the village, came home. To see mama. Mama, how are you? And he came with his uh, maybe usual entourage. Pew, 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 pew. They entered the compound. They, they entered the house. They sat down. Before long, as if uh, mama sent for pastor. Before long, pastor don't call. Huh? And as uh, the pastor was moving into the compound, mama said, he said, picking, 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 son, that is the pastor coming. The young man, the commissioner recalled all that the mother has been telling him about the pastor in the village. Quickly, the commissioner dismissed everybody that followed him to the place. They were already seated in the house. So, please, excuse me, gentlemen, my pastor is around. All of them got up and they moved outside. Say, pastor, please come in. And the pastor came in. He sat in a chair. This story I'm telling you very fresh. The man is around us here. He sat in a chair. Commissioner said, no, you are too far from me. I have heard so much about you. Could you please relocate? Come and sit on the chair. I'm sitting. Praise the Lord, somebody. <laughs> the pastor said, no, I, I'm okay here. It's honorable, I'm okay here. Please, it's okay. He said, no, please. Pastor, man of God, I want you to come and sit near me. The commissioner insisted. And the pastor got up and went sitting here. The commissioner. Commissioner told the pastor, say, my mother has told me so much about you. God asked Solomon, what can I do for you? Ask anything. In the same vein, 
The commissioner now asked the pastor, what can I do for you? Praise the Lord. Solomon, are you there? <laughs> what can I do for you? <laughs> with all the Prados lying outside there, with all the few, 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 and the man had just come, still in government, not retired. Pastor didn't say anything. Praise God. <laughs> There's something God is looking for if you must get something that will last in your life. Something God is looking for. And I thank God that the first preacher this morning also mentioned it. That there is a thing you will get that is more than what you are pursuing. Praise the Lord. Pastor couldn't know what to say. Didn't know what to ask for. Now the commissioner took over. He gave him three options. How many options? Three. Number one, he said, okay, if you will not ask for anything, I will buy you a Jeep. I like that clap. Clap now. <laughs> Village pastor now want to rise on a, a Jeep. Village pastor. You go feel by the petrol. Maybe the commissioner go see support and they buy petrol. <laughs> the man of God looked up. He didn't say anything. And the commissioner looked at him and said, uh, it's like, are you not saying anything? All right, maybe that one is too big for you. Okay, let me do a thing that people will not see. Just make a choice of any town around. Any town around. I will buy you a plot of land and I will build a duplex on it for you. What are we treating? An aspect of prayer that attracts God's blessing. An aspect of prayer. God asked Solomon, what do you want? Ask, and I will give you. This is a pastor of our generation. Face to face with Jeep. Face to face with duplex. The pastor still didn't say anything. That they see this kind of pastor for this generation. Come and ask me. Oh. <laughs> After this service, <laughs> come and try me. The commissioner came up again and said, Well, it's like, let me help you for that. All right, maybe people will be looking at you so big and. Uh, you don't want to show off or people will suspect you. He gave him the third option. He said, okay, I will send you to abroad. I will give you a house. I will say to you, you will stay overseas and I will make you happy there. For those who are Anglicans, sorry, I know we have some visitors. For those who are Anglicans, the pastor I'm talking about it's not a pastor that is wearing color already. We call them church agents. That the, all those small pastors that have not been ordained. Now we they talk so. Not an ordained pastor. So that you can know that no matter how bad, no matter how bad is the world, God knowing people. God still has some people somewhere. That people who have not bowed their head to bow. He said, I will relocate you abroad. I asked you the other time, come and try me. They never ordained me. I don't even know whether Bishop will send me to school. I don't know my future. I don't know what. Opportunity. Why can't I be a pastor overseas? Something will come into my head. Ladies and gentlemen, this pastor still didn't say yes or no. Something was inside of his mind. So commissioner came up again. He said, if you are not going to say anything, I will give you another opportunity. At least you must say something. You must give me an answer. My mommy has told me so much. At that point, you must make a choice. At that point, according to him, this is what he told me, which he shared. He said he was, he lifted up his eye and he looked at the ceiling of the house. And at a flash, a church building just appeared on the ceiling. 
and said, that is it. He brought down his face and said, Honorable Commissioner, build a beautiful church for worshippers in this your village. What do you think God will be doing as you are clapping your hand now? What do you think heaven will be doing now? As you are celebrating this choice, I believe that was how heaven was also celebrating the man. I pray for you, oh, heaven will celebrate your choice. You will ask for the writing in the name of Jesus. Everybody could be very bad, but God still know you. Commissioner said, what kind of human being are you? He got up and left, and he went to his station. The following day, the project started. Trailer of cement, sharp sand. They started landing the village. Just like that, like that, like that, like that. I don't want to continue the... the the, the testimony or the story I'm giving you because it led to where the man of God clearly saw what is called reward that is more than jeep. He has met with reward that is met than duplex. I'm sure he's happy in Nigeria than when he would have traveled abroad. Number four, I know that a greater reward is where is waiting for him above for this singular choice he made. Solomon said, give me discernment. Ladies and gentlemen, what is discernment that somebody should ask for? What is wisdom that somebody should place a demand on? And what is actually making me to talk like this is that the man was dreaming he didn't have opportunity to rationalize. If his eyes were opened, if he was seeing the owner of the pe I mean the person placing this demand or request on him, he could negotiate it with him. But this was dream. Ladies and gentlemen, so many dreams you have. What you dream in the night is a factor of the kind of life you have lived in daytime. Did you hear me well? Most of the things that happen to you in the night, in dream, is your way of life on earth. If it is true that some of them is the way we live here, anybody who likes money on earth, I'm sure in dream, he will also be asking for money. Is that not true? Yes, it is. Your mind, your mind. So when you kneel down and you are talking to God, where does God look at God is looking at your mind. God is looking at your spirit. At this point, Solomon was not rich yet. He wasn't rich. Solomon was not yet a rich man. So that he could not ask for money. Don't tell me Solomon, because he already, he, at this point, he wasn't a rich man yet. But he asked, say, God, you have made me a leader. I want to descend. So when they come, I'll be able to judge right. Did you now remember when two women slept? Eh? One rolled and killed the child. The other one carried and exchanged. Solomon gave right. Nobody will talk about Solomon's wisdom without referring to that miracle in the history of Israel. I want to plead with you, and as I'm sending this message, everyone and anyone who is listening to me, when you come into the presence of God, check your mind. What do you pray for? The book of James tells us that we pray and we don't receive answer because we ask wrongly. You don't ask the right thing. I, I listened to someone sharing with me in the office within the week. A marriage that lasted for nine months and it broke. After wedding, nine months, he broke up. I said, ah, not even up to a year. I said, no. At the end of the day, when, when they brought, when I look at the story they put before me, I discovered that the man who went for that girl, that lady, went seeking the hand of that lady in marriage because 
the man was seeing the family the woman come from. Food they there. Life they the family. Once I become their in-law, when I become their son-in-law, I will be part of the family. That, that was why he went for the girl. Not because of love. Not because of the leading. Please stand up. Let us pray. Father, as we go about living life, we want to make a choice of business. Give us discernment. Say amen. amen. We want to make a choice of career. Give us discernment. Amen. We want to make a choice of who is my life partner. Lord, give us discernment. Amen. May the power of wisdom be your portion from this service. Amen. You will not be a fool. You will not ask a means. You will ask and you will find. You will get what you are asking for. May the Lord remember you. Even when anything is gone wrong with your spirit, the spirit of the Lord will help you. You will think I right and I will think I right. In the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.